Hey, this is Rob Unspock, and welcome back to another edition of E-Heroes for those keeping track. This is episode 234, nice. and uh, my next guest hasn't been with us since episode 51, so that was like a century ago. Yeah. So I, I want to welcome back Manny Wolf, and we're going to talk about education, maybe yeah. intelligence. Maybe. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, what, what Manny's up to right now, because, you know, I, I'm... I'm on this new brilliant website of yours, and uh, it's going to change the world. That's the goal, man. And in a world where everybody says that, <laughs> you know, I mean, the, the world you and I inhabit, Rob, mm -hmm. everybody's changing the world, but it's with their new $2,000 course. That's right. You know, yeah. Um, or I, mean, I, I, I woke up, I woke up with the intention of changing the world and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I, you know. Maybe that was a, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, I did pour myself a glass of iced tea, and, and uh, hey, that's my day. There you go. <laughs> and, and if that's not changing the world, I don't know what is. <laughs> so I like that you started with that because I, I literally started with that question. You and I both operate in this online entrepreneur space, which is it's just – it's an overabundance of hyperbole and, and, you know, just misdirection and there's all this stuff. And one of the things that it's not directly related to the Advantage Education Academy project, but one of the things I realized recently is it really affects my game, my mental game, how much just incessant nonsense comes at me. Well, and, 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 so, not, and the fact is that it's 24 seven. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and, so I wake up sometimes in the middle of the night, and what's the first thing I do? Check my phone. <laughs> like, why? Yeah, I mean, why? I can't, like, so we can't escape it, um, right? So we got the TV to entertain us. We have internet to entertain us. But honestly, I think a lot of people don't want to be entertained. They want to be educated. Yeah, I think that there is an emerging hunger for that, an emerging sort of realization. So there's a lot of things there in a very small space. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's an emerging realization that constant distraction is is just that. It's constant distraction. And, mm -hmm. and by by its nature, it can't be healthy. Right. And you know, I did I did start advantage with the question of like. Everybody talks about changing the world. If I was going to do it, what would it take? What what would it really mean to do that? And through a lot of thinking and talking with people, uh, I came up with. So you've got people in the technology sector, especially Elon Musk comes to mind, who are changing the world for sure. Right. You can't, you know, Steve Jobs changed the world. The way that I would do it, because I can't build anything technical, <laughs> you know, my my thinking was this. If you could upgrade the operating system of a generation of kids, that would change the world. Mm -hmm. That was the, the foundation, the premise. What would it look like to update the operating system of a generation of kids? Being fully aware, by the way, of how, you know, how bad that question can go. Mm -hmm. So what I came up with was initially was what if you could instill rigorous critical thinking ability in a generation what would what would we look like in 20 years if that generation had that ability and that became very very intriguing and the thing for me because you know i don't I, I don't have the kind of resources that that elon musk has or whatever the thing for me was like this is something that i could do you know like sometimes you'll have an idea a, a bhag <laughs> and you won't see the path, right? But other times you'll have an idea and you'll see the path. This was one of those ones where like I saw the path and I was like, holy cow, like I could actually do this. <laughs> um, fast forward through a lot of research and, and just, you know, brainstorming back and forth with people, humbling myself to other opinions. Um, oh, that, would, that must have been torture. It's not easy, man. <laughs> But but interestingly enough, it's something that we need along with upgrading the operating system of a generation. Part of that is not being so easily tricked into like tribalism. Right. 
right? Whether it's, you and I agree on most everything, whether it's our side or their Urban. side. <laughs> yeah, right. <Urban. laughs> but, you know, on an individual level, a long time ago, it was when I was first in recovery, sobriety. My sponsor said, what's more important to you, being right or making progress? And that hit me like a, a Muhammad Ali punch. Mm -hmm. I mean, really did. It's one of those things that still guides me. What What is more important? You know, because I would routinely fight with friends. I would routinely fight with girlfriends. I would routinely fight with everybody, pretty mm -hmm. much, you know. And at a certain point, I realized I don't think people like me very much. Because I'm just so confrontational. I'm just so willing to fight to be right. So that question, um, you know, what's more important? Being right or actually getting things done? So humbling myself to other people's opinions was like, it's actually very important for me. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this idea that critical thinking could really make an, an impact sort of expanded to, well, research unilaterally shows that once people get done with school, the things that propel them to not only successful lives, but fulfilling lives are what we now call the soft skills. Mm -hmm. Very little of it has to do with the rigorous application of your degree and field of study, right? Mm -hmm. So naturally- or, or employers are just hiring you because you have a degree, but it has nothing to, to do right. with- the, the correlating job that they're offering. Yeah. So my my input on that is anecdotal, but it is far ranging. Everyone I've ever spoken to, with the exception of like science majors, you know, who 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 have like a very narrow, deep focus. Maybe say my neighbor is getting a PhD in doesn't it, it's entomology, like insects, studying mm -hmm. insects. So that's going to be something where your degree is going to get you, you know, it's going to, but for the most part, the degree gets you in the door. Everybody says this, this is, this is like a cliche now, right? The degree gets you in the door. It doesn't really help your career. Mm -hmm. So the, the thought process was if employers are looking for critical thinking ability above all else, which is researched, that's, that's verified. If there's a, there's a, Two studies, I find I love this. One from Harvard, one from Stanford. Both pretty reputable schools. Mm -hmm. You know. Except, and, you know, Stanford kicked out. I mean, not kicked out, but they 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 had Mark Zuckerberg in. And everybody knows how that well that <laughs> <Right>. was, yeah. <laughs> oops. Yeah. So but no. It's a good school. It's just, you know. Yeah. It so they both did studies on on what you know, what underpins a successful, fulfilling life. And both of them got the exact same. This is where it gets interesting. Both of them said from their research that 85% of lifelong success and fulfillment comes from soft skills. Mm -hmm. So I reduced the soft skills down to communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. Those four seem to encompass all the individual you know, because some people will list soft skills. What about empathy? What about temperance? What about prudence? What about, and I think all those things are encapsulated in the big four. Mm -hmm. So then it became, okay, if critical thinking alone now gets expanded out into these four sort of pillar soft skills, and these soft skills, uh, all the research shows that they're more reliable indicators of the quality of life that you'll have both in terms of professional success and in terms of fulfillment. So then it, it's like the, the next thing that hit me was the role of schools is to prepare kids for life after school, to give them the best chance at mm -hmm. a future. If the future that they're being prepared for, it hinges more on these soft skills. Why is that not present in schools? Mm -hmm. And that's what Advantage Education Academy exists for. Is It's a whole new way of teaching that incorporates a heavy emphasis on soft skills and leadership development, along with preparing you for academic success. Mm -hmm. Now, currently at this phase one, it's just tutoring. So it's not, we have plans to be a full alternative to public school, but we're not there yet. 
Right now it's just tutoring, but with what we call the spark method. Mm -hmm. And the spark method is where we instill, you know, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking, leadership. Um, and so, I, I mean, now I'm sort of bogged down in the mundane sort of marketing questions of how do I get it out there and everything else. But that's that's what it started with the question, how could we legitimately change the world for the better? Honestly, without the hyperbole, you know, without all the BS, like what could actually do it? And I was like, I, I think that could actually do it. Mm -hmm. And that led to where we are now, which is me talking to you again. And and we are actively uh, actively racing towards, in the startup world, they call it going from zero to one. We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now we're putting the marketing in place to start to start doing it. You know, I, I was looking at the, the the website, and and you have this acronym Spark. Yeah. And um, you know, a lot of people don't use acronyms, especially you know, college based systems and and, mm -hmm. and higher higher education. And and uh, but the thing is, for those that are critical thinkers, for those that want to remember stuff better, yeah. acronyms work. Oh yeah, yeah, and, they're, they're um, proven. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and. So tell us a little bit about how you came up with Spark, because yeah, every time I think of Spark, you know, I, I think of the All Spark from Transformers. Yeah, That's, it's different, right? But, you know, it, it, it's that it's that one thing. Yeah, that it's that one thing that that if you held on to it, it's going to give you energy. It's going to give you yeah, you know, you know that 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 push to to go forward. And and so yeah, it, it, it maybe it's a different word, but it's the same meaning. No, it's the same thing. Um, so for us, the Spark Method is a training that our tutors have to undergo in order to be certified Advantage Education tutors. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's it's pretty radically different from conventional teacher at the board, silent kids in rows of desks teaching. Well, for one thing, it's online. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It is. It's meant to be small groups. And it's meant to be more so that the, the tutor vacillates between sort of leading the crew and also being a part of the crew. But they guide with with, you know, um, intelligent questions and things like that. And the acronym itself stands for sprint, present, ask, reflect, know. And that is the process through which. Not only do the kids learn, you know, the rigorous academic stuff, but they live the soft skills, the critical thinking, the uh, Socratic method, mm -hmm. the first principles reasoning, um, something that we call the student as teacher model, which is actually this is interesting. I don't know if you'll geek out on this like I do, but the student as teacher model is actually a derivative of um, Navy SEALs training and and where. Whoever's got the right answer in the moment is the leader. Mm. And then the next person who has the right answer is the leader. And it takes all of this sort of like training within the group for everyone to be able to go, okay, it's you. Now it's me. Now it's him. And it's the most effective. I mean, it's the most effective groups ever in the history of mankind, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because, you know, you, you at least when I was in school, Mm -hmm. You know, only the, 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 I can't say the smart kids, but the ones that, that, uh, were more extroverted, they, they yeah. wanted to raise their hand. They wanted to get the attention. They, yeah. and, and the, the, you know, the, the introverts would be sitting back or, you know, pretending that they were asleep because they didn't want to yeah. get called on. Yeah. Well, this method makes you that leader. Yeah. Every single yeah. one wants to raise their hand, not because they want attention, but because they know the answer. And because if we've done our job correctly, we instill in them the value of being a contributing part of the team. Mm -hmm. Like that's huge. And that's a whole radically different way of thinking for a lot of kids. Right. You know, a lot of kids are, I mean, you're insecure, you're God knows what's going on at home and all these things. <clears throat> this is a place where you get to learn the highest level of thinking that, that, humankind has created in terms of productivity and teamwork and um because we didn't by the way we didn't invent anything here 
I really right. want to. <laughs> no, it's important to know that because what we did was we took, I took critical thinking, Socratic reasoning, first principles reasoning, student as teacher model, dynamic listening, good old fashioned brainstorming, and the 12 principles of leadership, uh, which is the foundation of what high performing like very very niche high performing military teams use right and I took all those things and did my best to synthesize them into a model that the teachers we call them facilitators they and i hate this word because it's been co-opted by the hippies but they embody <laughs> this model you know um i didn't other than synthesizing them you know that old saying there's nothing new under the sun I didn't put any of my own philosophies in there. Mm -hmm. I just took what has massively successful track records. But, you know, based on, on your website, I mean, you're, you're focused on a core. Yeah. I think uh, what mostly STEM. Um, yeah. We, we, we have actually voted for simplicity of getting to market to start with just math. Mm hmm um, using design thinking philosophy, which is, you know, one thing in each category. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with math as the most in demand sort of subjects for tutoring, um, and then extend to STEM and then to full curriculum. And then when we get to full curriculum, that's when I'm going to go, guess what? Now we can offer you a full alternative to public school. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to keep, keep your kids in public school. Right. Well, that's the, what I'm excited the, about. The, the nice thing about math is it's universal. Yeah. You know, so you can take math from from, you know, United States to Spain to wherever right. yeah. you understand math. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's sometimes it's hard to do that with with uh, some of the other subjects, because really, I mean, who wants to learn American history when you're, you know, you're over in Spain? Yeah. <laughs> when you're not an American. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't it's, even want to know about American right. history. And I yeah. live here. I was I was just having this conversation earlier today. Uh, a friend of mine asked me, what would your curriculum look like when you do offer a full alternative to school? And one of the things that we struck upon was history. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if history was taught not from a perspective of whoever one wrote the history book, but from a perspective of as a self-authoring sovereign citizen, what can you learn from the past? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, well, like you know, the way that I was, uh, I was in Charleston, South Carolina a couple of weeks ago. And, and, uh, you know, I, I took this walking tour mm -hmm. and the walking tour. The, the, the gentleman that was doing the walking tour was telling us stuff based on, you know, history, but it was never taught in the history books. Yeah, it was yeah. as if they they took everything that was ever wrong, put it in yeah. history books, and here's the guy going, "If you've ever learned history in school, what I'm about to tell you is totally right. different." Right. Oh, that's how the the Civil War started. And, mm -hmm. You know, and, and it was like, why do I have to go somewhere to learn history? Why can't I just pick up a book? But they white they whitewash history, and and I think everybody should understand the true nature of history. I think everybody should understand the true nature of it. I agree with you. And doesn't it seem like something that all sort of great leaders and, and generals and like great leaders across all disciplines all seem to have this ability to extrapolate value mm -hmm. from historical context. Right. So if you can do that, then history becomes this amazing thing. Mm -hmm. But if you're only learning history because it's like, A, you're required. And B, it's either wildly one-sided or wildly the other sided, it it loses its value to you as a person. Right. Because yeah. it becomes a thing that you can't bring to bear in the solving of problems to move forward, right? When when uh, I was over in Madrid in 2011, they have statues and columns and all every you know, dedicated to Christopher Columbus. Mm -hmm. And you know, that he's they for for Spaniards, Christopher Columbus is one of their heroes. Yeah. And and as I was growing up, you know, we we made Christopher Columbus one of our American heroes. But lately it's like, 
oh, oh no, he's just a super bad guy. You know, let's get rid of Christopher, you know, Columbus Day. And, and now it's, you know, uh, some other holiday. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Come on now. You know, why? How, how does it change anything? But it does. Yeah. Well, that kind of does segue nicely for me back into my argument that is pro-critical thinking. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of what we see happening right now is the effects of too easy to manipulate tribalism. Right? right. It's too easy to push people into camps and point at the other guy. Uh, it's a lack of being able to deconstruct and reconstruct complex situations. So so then I always go back to like, what if a whole generation really did know first principles reasoning? Mm-hmm. What if they were versed in asking Socratic questions to get to truth? You know, I don't think we'd be here. Right. Here, meaning with the divisiveness that we're seeing everywhere. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and you know, I, it's really interesting as someone who, who puts these tools to work in my own life. One of the things that happens for me is I start seeing my own biases. You know, <laughs> and it's like, well, you know I, I, I just on a previous podcast, I was talking about the ease of the Internet. And yeah. You know, I, I love it for the simplicity of being able to find information. However, there's so much misinformation right. that it sometimes becomes a, 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 a weight because, you know, we just go, oh, OK. And then we pick the first thing that pops up, regardless yeah. if it's right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the age of before Internet, mm-hmm. I think a lot of people were smarter because they had to get their information from books. They had to go to, you know, I'm not saying yeah. college, but they went to libraries and they did all that. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, here's the information. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Christopher Columbus was an alien from the planet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it says here Christopher Columbus directed Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. And, and uh, you know, people believe that. Because yeah. It's on the Internet. According to Jay Shetty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I think that we need to go back to, uh, and I'm not saying that we need the police information, but it's just, it needs to be better, sorted. Yeah, it, it needs to be better. And if there is a natural equilibrium between what people will accept and what is given to them, we need to raise what people will accept, mm-hmm. the standard. You know, I think... The word that came to my mind when you were talking about pre-internet research and information gathering was rigor. There was a rigor to to intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, my one of my co-founders actually said that you know he's like what what we need to reintroduce to the world is this idea of the value of rigorous thought process, rigorous thinking, you know, and and the results that it yields. And I think that's exactly what you're talking about. It's if you first put up this screen, in this case, a digital screen through which all your information comes, then it becomes very easy to sort of manipulate that screen. And, you know, ironically, that's kind of what SEO does. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it's, it's you and I are both at the age where we still remember what the Dewey Decimal System was. Right. And yeah. and so you went into a library. If you didn't know what you were looking for, you would go into this this index system and you mm-hmm. would look for it and it would be a little card that would have, OK, this is the location. This is what yeah. it does. This is, this is kind of a, a, a conceptual idea of, of what you're looking for. And then you would go find it. Yeah. Google has eliminated that ability for us to find stuff. And I think in our journey to find stuff, we learn a lot more you know, then just pick. Right. Up. Yeah. And, and Second and third order value is right. present. And, and, and I think with yeah. your system, you're taking it back to that level where, you know, it forces people to find that information, to take them on that journey yeah. of learning. Yeah. And it's so much different. And uh, I, I think we need it back. I, I agree. Um, I have recently become, and I know this is going to be a polarizing thing to say, so, you know, whatever, <laughs> but I've recently become a real fan of, of the lectures of Jordan Peterson. And the main thing about him that, that really impresses me is he refuses to be 
tricked into oversimplified arguments. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. Like, I think so it would be a net positive to life if we were all able to sort of not fall for these ad hoc arguments and these oversimplified soundbite type of, you know, messages. I just think it would, uh, let me put it this way. I think it, it would be such a valuable contribution that I'm willing to spend the rest of my life working on it, you know? Right. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is this is going to be, you know, your legacy. You're, you're, you're yeah. leaving behind a way that, that, future kids can learn so much better. They yeah. don't have to fall into that Borg mentality where right. you know, everybody's a collective. This is how we're going to think. You're right. going to teach them how to be critical thinkers so they can go out and be true leaders. Yeah. And I always say, you may fall anywhere in the ideological spectrum once you've learned how to think for yourself, but at least you can rest knowing that you got there through a rigorous process of arriving at your beliefs rather than having them just sort of, you know, a dump truck backed up and <laughs> emptied on you. <laughs> and that's better. And I would predict that there are still going to be liberals and still going to be conservatives and still going to be centrists, but everybody's going to be able to, uh, for one thing, be more empathic to everybody else or empathetic rather. And then th for another thing, it's like, you'll know why you believe that. Mm -hmm. And that has value. Like that has inherent value yeah, to society. Yeah, I think it's it's good to teach, <laughs> teach kids to question things. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And and uh, mm -hmm. Common Core was just one of those drastic things that the schools. I, I don't know why they even implemented it, but I don't either. It, it, it can you know the, the kid my my kids and grandkids come back. Hey, can you help me with this? And I'm looking at it going, holy. Shit. Yeah, Here, I don't read hieroglyphics. Answer. Here's the answer, <laughs> right? Which took me two seconds to do, but no, you got to show your work. And yeah, it's going to take four hours, and right, uh, and uh, you know, I, I got to call somebody from NASA to help me. <laughs> what the hell's this shit? You know, I, yeah, math, math is math. Forget that Common Core crap. Teach people right. how to actually solve. Stuff. Right. Yeah, that's a fascinating. Um, example of like solution creation by committee right somewhere somebody said wouldn't it wouldn't it show the wouldn't it be valuable if we show if they had to show the thought process isn't that what we're looking for right. and and yes maybe at the purest sense that is what we're looking for then it goes through committee after committee after committee after committee and it turns from this noble idea into this like i i i have to what you know, and here's something interesting about that, that I don't hear a lot of conversation around is gifted kids often get um, left behind, misdiagnosed and otherwise marginalized. Because like for me, when it came to math up to fractions, I could pretty much calculate it off the top of my head. Anything more complex than fractions, I couldn't. But up to that, like multiplication, subtraction, division, all that stuff. I could kind of see it and do it and get the right answer only to be penalized for sort of not trotting around the track the way I was told. Mm -hmm. And to my personality, which I'm guessing in this way is a lot like your personality, which is then a lot like many personalities, is I dig my heels in on principle. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I, as a teenager, it's like, I'd rather flunk. Right. Then kowtow to this absurdity, although yeah, I didn't have I mean, that language it, for it uh, back then. You know? my, my one son is the same way. And, and uh, yeah, he, he finally just shut down and said, I, I don't need this crap. Yep. Yeah. You know? And how's that doing anybody a favor? Right. And, you know, uh, I mean, I, I I went through school. I mean, I I, I did the algebras. I did the calculus. I did the geometries. I did, mm -hmm. you know, some of the, even the, the problematic math, you know, crap that. I never use today. Uh, right. But, you know, now I look at it going, I don't know what they're teaching these kids today because this isn't math. This yeah. is like a combination of, 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 of uh, English and word problems and all. Oh, yeah. They have to be, no, they don't have to be this type of thinker. You know, this, yeah. this drive people nuts. This is, this is why we have prisons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. These, these questions are, uh, end up making people killers. Uh, no, you can't do that. So, Well, I, I think that's kind of one of the second order risks of trying to force a, a wide variety of different people into a very narrow channel of like, right. well, first of all, not only is it like you have to do this for success, which turns out not to be true after all, right. but, but second of all, it's you're punished if you don't do it and do it this way. And you're not just punished in school. You're punished with social stigma. Right. You know, for me, I, I say this now and it seems silly. It seems like I'm just making this up, but this was true because I had such a hard time in high school, all with being told what to do. It was all about pushing back against authority that I couldn't see justification for. Mm -hmm. I went into my 30s thinking I was some kind of an idiot who just happened to have this huge vocabulary. Right. You know, nobody ever came along and said, hey, just the fact that you have twice the vocabulary of most people is actually a sign of intelligence. Mm -hmm. So I went into I went through years of thinking I was an idiot. Right. Well, you know, I, and and uh, we just got notice uh, here in Pennsylvania that uh, uh, a child has to be 18 years of age before they can even graduate. And uh, <laughs> I, I know for for me, I was like 17 when I graduated. Yeah. My wife was 17. So now you're holding a kid back because of their age right. or, or when they right. were born. And you know, for me, it was always the fact that they were slowing me down in my learning. Right. I wanted to learn, you know, the kids were on page 15 and I'm on page 200 and some because I'm a fast reader and I can absorb yeah. all this. But they're no, Rob, you got to slow down. You got to slow yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, I'm already like 10 times faster than right. these people. Yeah. yeah. So I've been digging in only recently last week on the outsized negative impacts to gifted kids when being required to go through public education, which is very much within a, within a tiny margin, it's basically everybody has to move the exact same speed. Mm -hmm. If you move too fast, they'll put you in gifted, but gifted is only like, bit, it's only one little step higher. Right. And then, then you're sort of out of options other than, oh, you can go up one grade, you can go up two grades, but now you've got all this weird social and emotional stuff that you have to deal with because you're not the same age group as your peers. Mm -hmm. So there are 8 million estimates, say 8 million gifted, whatever that designation is, uh, gifted kids in the U.S. at school age. Three or four million of them are misdiagnosed. And this is where ADHD medicine comes in and mm -hmm. things like that. So I don't know what the strict parameters for an epidemic are. To me, this looks like an epidemic. Mm -hmm. You're talking about 10% of all school age kids struggling, not because they're dumb, but because they're smart. Right. That floors me. Mm -hmm. It floors me that we haven't, we don't have a better system for the ones that are going to probably contribute the most to society. You know? okay. <laughs> it's just, God. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And, oh, it's just, you know, the, the, so that your system actually rewards people that need it the most. And, and that yeah. to me is, is, is the best way. But how do you how do you convince the parents that they need to take their kids out of a public school system or even uh, right. a, a paid school system, a Catholic school or, or yeah. higher, or, and, yeah. and play, place them into your system? Well, we're not quite there yet, but we are working on answering that question. So currently, the argument that, that Advantage Education makes is this. There's only one reason you'd hire a tutor. And that's to help your kids do better in school because they're not, <clears throat> they're struggling. Mm -hmm. But the real reason that you need your kids to do better in school is because you want to set them up for a better experience in life. Well, it turns out that life after school is largely dictated by these four soft skills plus leadership. So that is why Advantage Education Academy has rethought the whole idea of tutoring and educational support 
to include emphasis on these soft skills. So that's that's the that's the sales pitch, right? That's the marketing department, which is me. <laughs> that's the marketing department's co- contribution. I think when it comes time to say we have a full offering of school, you can take your kids out of public school and do this. I think the curriculum that we will create will speak for itself. Mm-hmm. You know, we'll we will teach things like public speaking. We will teach things like uh, history, but from a perspective of learning from history, not just learning history. Right. You know, not just not just dates and history books, but like what what patterns can we see all through history? What you know, what does the past tell us that we can predict the future with that kind of thing? Um, I'm pretty confident that we can have kids done with, you know, um, a a solid foundation in math by the eighth or ninth grade. Mm -hmm. I don't think that all kids need to go up into calculus, right? Into, into the the advanced stuff. It's, it's too esoteric for most, Mm -hmm. but then you've got the small minority who thrive on it by all means. Let's get them just, let's build them a launch pad. And while we build them a launch pad, why don't we also have some conversations with uh, the tech sector? Say, hey, we've got a, a pool here of of kids that look like look to be ingenious in math. Let's create some apprenticeship programs so that you guys can get top caliber talent four years earlier than you otherwise would. Right. You know things like that. Yeah, because I I just I know some of the public schools around here. <clears throat> kids that don't want a uh, normal classroom, they want uh, a, a tech school or trades you know, subjects of some sort. Yeah. Can't get them if their grades aren't good enough. Right. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, if their grades aren't good enough, then put them in a trade that they can right. actually learn. <laughs> right. It's it's uh, backwards. It, yeah. It's baby and bath water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, the more that I, I started to pull back the layers on, you know, the public education system and standardized testing and common core and, and all the philosophy behind it, the weirder it gets. <laughs> I mean, the weirder it gets. And then you look at all the, the different companies and people who claim to be revolutionizing education. And without exception so far, this is what I've found. I have it. This is not exhaustive. This is anecdotal, but this is what I found, Rob. It is messaging and nothing else. Mm -hmm. There is no radical transformation of any kind. The closest thing to that that I've found would be Waldorf school, which might be good for some kids, but the, but the full focus on self-directed learning where there's very little to any structure at all is questionable to me. I, I think that human beings, you know, freedom comes from a uh, thoughtful constraint, right? Right. And then creativity does too. If you just have no requirements on you, it, it's a very small minority that will thrive in that environment. Mm-hmm. And so structure, I think is, I think the the argument for structure is pretty self-evident. So other than Waldorf, Everybody is just doing tiny, tiny iterations off of the foundational public school model. Mm -hmm. They're basically, it's, what is that expression? It's an old wine in a new bottle. (laughs) (laughs) So um, it's, it's a really strange thing. And of course, most parents totally recognize that school doesn't match the realities of the world. Mm-hmm. You know, and the, the ones that have dug in a little bit understand that school is still training to a factory worker model when the odds of working one job for the rest of your life and retiring with a pension are almost, I mean, it's almost gone. Mm-hmm. It's not 100% gone, but it's almost gone. And so it's doing kids a profound disservice to keep them in that model and keep them trained. One of the things I like saying is in school, if you're in class together and you team up to get the right answer, it's called cheating. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
But if you team up to get the right answer and work, it's called innovating. Yeah, or collaboration. And then <laughs> or collaboration, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 what we as entrepreneurs do every single day. And right. oh, but okay, right. we're in, yeah. in, in a classroom it would be called cheating. Yeah. Yeah. Automatically we're like, who says that's the rule? Why do I have to do it that way? What if I can get the result? You know, and, and that's like America's best export is and 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 here at home too, still is 100% uh, innovation. It's mm -hmm. entrepreneurialism. It is our, it is what makes us unique. Right. And to stifle rather than encourage that for 12 years strikes me as a sadistic and psychotic act, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and self-inflicted too. It's like somehow it, you could make the argument that the public education bureaucracy is somewhat like a tumor. Mm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so how do people learn more about uh, Advantage Education and, and where do they go? So you can just, uh, <clears throat> do you want me to provide links? No, I mean, just tell you just stay I'll, on. I'll, I'll put the link yeah. down below. Just, you know. Yeah, so uh, they can, you know, you can give them your 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 PO box. You can give them right, right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the email to get a hold of me directly is Manny at Advantage Education dot Academy, and I would say for those that can't distinguish in their head between dot Academy and dot com, maybe we're not ready to chat yet. <laughs> <laughs> just to, since your show is about sarcasm and since sarcasm uh, is your and, defining trait. And, and, and to be honest, you know, when I was, I was, I, I knew it was advantage education and some type in advantage education academy.com. And I'm like, no, this ain't it. <laughs> and for some reason in my mind, I'm like, okay, let's type advantage education dot academy. Yeah. <clears throat> and it popped up and I'm like, huh. Oh, I'm a genius. There you go. There you go. Um, See? But you know, you'll, once you get on the page, you'll see two triangles, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in between uh, uh, some 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 lines. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Delta Epsilon Delta. A -A. Yeah. Yeah. There you, there you go. But, uh, you know, it, it's so. If they want to send their kids, great. But yep. what if they want to invest in you? What if they want to help you with this legacy? Right. And they do that. So so for that, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, that's a, that's right where we are right now. Um, my email is the best way to get in touch with me. You can go directly to the website to look over our offer, our position, and our promise at advantageeducation.academy. And if you want it, Rob, I can give you the, the free download link to our, our book that we just finished uh, lighting the spark for your child's lifelong success. There you go. Yeah. So that's how to get a hold of me. Or look at my face, find me on Facebook, and get a hold of me that way. I'm not. Uh, I'm not sequestered. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. You know. Uh, until Facebook uh, freezes your profile. Right. Yeah. Until yeah. until that happens. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me started on that. Yeah. But. You know, for those who who want a different education for your children, mm -hmm. for those for the kids that that you know are are screaming to learn more, yeah, this might be something that you want to consider. And well, what, uh, you know, I, I've known you for a long time, and and yeah. uh, you don't do things half ass. You go through and and, and yeah. you plan, you look at. You mean this is this is something that's been a long time in the making, and it uh, really has, yeah. You know, I would I would leave people with this thought. If your kid is struggling in school and you know that your kid is smart, there's a very good chance that they're struggling because they're not wired to be complacent followers. And that's something to really think about. What tends to happen is, you know, kids need a context from which to sort of transition from kids to adults. Mm -hmm. And the United States, the West, we don't really provide those rites of passage. And so what happens, especially with the bright kids that get marginalized inappropriately at school, <clears throat> they turn to bad behaviors, mm -hmm. you know. And so in a way, this is this is very, very likely a sort of uh, a healthy way to take your kids through that transition and set them up for success rather than having them, you know, go off into 
who knows what. Right. And and if you are a teacher listening to this, mm-hmm. <clears throat> reach out to Manny because maybe, you know, as this system grows, you know, you can transition from what you're doing to help Manny and, and uh, absolutely the advantage of education Academy. We have, um, we have six figure salaries as a, a built in for, for our tutors is, is, that's a guarantee. If you work full time for us, once you pass the orientation period, you'll make six figures because teachers, A, teaching should be competitive right. and push the best to the top. And B, if you are in the, if you are the best, you should easily be making six figures. Oh. I mean, it's absurd that teachers have to go through what they have to go through just to be in service. Yeah. Right. It's like it's, you know, and there's a lot of brilliant teachers out there that uh, don't get the credit that they deserve and yeah. or or don't get the help the students that really want it. Right. And uh, you know, they're 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 uh limited to what they can do and what they can say and mm-hmm. and um you know, it, it's it, it, but it's the system that we live in, but I I think that it needs to be changed. Yeah. Yeah, I do too, obviously. <laughs> so any last words before we part ways? Just thank I'm you. My friend. <laughs> oh, I'm going on this long journey. Forget it. Right. We'll never see you again. No. Yeah. No, just thank you for having me on and letting me talk about this. Um, you know, uh, getting the word out there, I think right now is the main thing. There's, there's so, I don't think faith in public education has ever been lower. Right. I don't think the need for an alternative has ever been greater. And I just don't see anybody really doing anything meaningful to make that change. Right. Uh, again, small iterations on on the the very model that doesn't work well. Right, and and so, you know to go back to the the uh, big hairy audacious goal. Yeah, this is it. This is this is how we're going to change the world. This is how we're going yeah. to get those new leaders. And so, mm-hmm. anybody that's listening, please go to advantageeducation.academy. You know, yeah. uh, follow Manny on Facebook or or LinkedIn or wherever he is, and yeah. and, and learn. And yeah. um, you know, if if you like me, I'm sure you're going to like Manny because you know, <laughs> we, we do yeah, we, we do think the same way. And and uh, you know, uh, granted, I don't have a beard and mustache, but I could grow one. But you could grow one if you wanted. It comes in white, so right. <laughs> Yeah, like if you have kids and you're worried about them, let's have a conversation. You know, let's let's see if see if we can help you. And there you go. That's it, folks. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Adios.